9 equals 73. So let's just get a quick reminder of what we talked about last time. All right, so x plus 9 equals 73. x is just some number that we don't know, right? That's the, the role that x plays, the unknown amount. And the way that looks on these scales over here that we played around with a little bit, is just like a, a little container, and we don't know how many are in that container, how much that container weighs, or how much that container is worth, okay? Right? Sure. Did all that? Or did we not? We did? Mm -hmm. We did. Okay. Uh, plus 9. So 1 is represented by one of these guys here. Right. So to represent 9, I'd have to show you 9 of these. 9 of those. Now, the scale is balanced with what on the other side? 73, okay, so I'll just put 73 of these, okay? So the idea here with a scale or with an algebraic equation is to manipulate it so that all that's left on one side is one of these guys, and on the other side we should just have a bunch of those little tokens or in an equation, a number, which is a number that will tell us what x is worth. <coughs> and if we had a scale, what would you do to the objects on this scale to get this guy <coughs> by itself right, and leave it balanced so that I would see how many <coughs> that container is worth? Emma? Take off nine tokens from each side. Take nine tokens here. Get rid of all those. Okay. But if I just did that, what just happened to the scale? Well, it'd be lighter than the other one. That side would be lighter, this side would go down, that side would go up, right? Yeah, yeah. So we need to take 9 from this side as well, right? take equal amounts from both sides. If we did that, how many of those would be left if we had 73 to start with? 64. Now we have 64 of these. And so if that were possible, it's not possible to put 64 in one of these little containers, but. Uh, if it were, that's what we would find out. Like there would be 64 there, and inside this mystery container there would be, we know, 64. I guess inside there would be 63 in the container with one, but it would be the same as 64 of these little coins here. Okay. So the whole purpose of even bothering with this scale is to teach you the reason why we do, the reason why we do what? Scale is a it, it is a it's something that we can look at and understand the importance of always if we're gonna mess around with the scale measuring. Do you want the scale to look like this? Oh, balancing. We're gonna keep it balanced. How do we always keep a scale balanced? Have equal amounts of um, weight on each side. Keep right, equal. and if they'll they'll start out equal, right? That's how an equation works. And to make sure that it stays equal, we take equal amounts off, we put equal amounts on, we do equal things to both sides. Right? Uh, including if I wanted to look at half of this side for some reason. If I want to know what half of this side is worth, I'd have to take half of this side as well. Right? Equal things to both sides. Right. Now, So let's look at what it looks like to do that to the equation. What does it look like to do that same thing to this equation? Yeah. Um, under the plus nine, you do minus nine, and then you do the same over to the 73 side. Exactly. And so that is essentially the same thing as what we just talked about on the scale. We take nine away from one side, we take nine away from the other side. We're so taking nine from both sides, and x is 64. 
let's try it again, but let's just change it up just a bit. What if we had x minus 5 equals 24? Okay, so now we have a number minus 5 equals 24. And it's, it's good that we have algebra <coughs> equations and symbols and stuff because showing subtraction, if I were to try and show you x minus 5, that'd be kind of a hard thing to do. It's easy to show you x plus some stuff. I can just put, I can just put stuff on this side with x. To show you how I would subtract 5 from x, it becomes complicated. But now we see, we can just visualize this as, okay, it's, it's a scale, it's a balance. Both sides are the same. And I understand why I would do the same thing to both sides, because it's balanced and it needs to stay balanced. If I do different things on either side, if I subtract something from one side and not the other, now I've made one side balance. off balance. Okay? So now, the whole thing we're trying to do is get x by itself, and on the other side a number, what x is worth. Okay. So, how would I get it so that x is by itself, it no longer has 5 <coughs> subtracted from it? Obviously. You would add 5? Add 5. Let's check that out. Let's just talk about that for a second. So this is a, a minus 5, subtract 5, negative 5, all those things are the same thing. Okay. So let's think of it as a negative number, a negative 5. What's a negative 5 plus 5? So zero. Negative five plus five is zero. So is that good to have x plus zero on the side? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. It just equals to x. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Zero. So, so x plus zero. The zero is nothing. X plus zero is just x. Right? Yeah. Yeah. X plus zero is the same value as x. And so to keep this balance balanced, or the scale balanced as it was to start with, we add five to the other side. And twenty-four plus five is twenty-nine. So x is. Okay. You don't have to write that x plus zero step, but that is what we're going for. That's what we want to see. Yes? Uh, like, I did the same thing, just shorter without putting, like, without exiting out the 5. I just added 5 to 24 and got 29. Okay, that is fine. Uh, it's the same thing I would do. But I'm very, you know, practiced and experienced, and I rarely make mistakes in this case. Okay, but when I see students in eighth grade math or in algebra, algebra one or algebra two, I still see a lot of mistakes being made, like like this. You get x minus five. You're not really paying very much attention. You wind up with x equals 19 because you want to do it in your head quickly. Okay. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. If you're making this mistake, if you did make this mistake, then you want to write down every step. If that's not a mistake that you make, if you're familiar with this, then fine, don't write down that step. But consider showing your work as silly and as uh, time consuming as, it's, it, as it may seem. Show your work so that at the very least, if you do make a mistake, I can look at it and say, oh, I see what you did there. But Think about, think about this, okay? Because if this person did, without writing it down, what, what did they do? They subtracted five. Subtracted five. Okay, kind of makes sense, except if I take a number and I subtract five, and then I subtract five again, what have I done? I've got minus 10, right? So, well, can I subtract five from both sides? No. Yes, you could. Do you want to? It's silly because what I really have here is x is x minus 10, right? And now I've not really any closer to what I wanted to have. But I could add 10 to both sides at this point, and we'll get the same answer. Okay. But because this person has shown their work, I can discuss with them what we need to work on. If I just come by and you have 19, now I have to figure out what did you do, what was your reasoning behind that. Right, so show your work until you don't make that mistake. 99% of the time you're doing that correctly. Okay. But until then, show your work every time. That's really just advice for you. Okay. Um, 
So let's talk about this one. 8 plus x equals negative 2. What? Avery? I want to solve this one. Go ahead. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to plus negative 2. Plus negative 2. I cancel that out. Wait, no. Plus. And then plus negative 2 and 8. Plus negative. Now, I, want, I just want to point out that plus negative 2. I would just do plus 2. Okay, just plus 2. Just plus 2. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, well, let's all not talk because I don't think that's helping. Negative 2 plus 2, what's that? Zero. Okay, we have 0 on this side. What's 8 plus 2? And x equals 10. x equals 10. x plus 10 is nothing. If x were 10, what would 10 plus 10 be? 20. 20. 20. Um, I just right. make it. It would be 10. Let's prove it just by showing our work. Let's, let's prove that. Zach? Okay, so I. Here, I want you to start from here, though. Uh, How would you solve this equation, the way it looks? I don't know if I can solve it. I, I got this. Oh, good. Can you pass it off to somebody that has their hand Kate. raised? Kate. Okay. So do minus 10 and then minus 10 on the other side. Okay, so 10 <laughs> minus 10. I can't that out. 0. 0 plus x plus x equals negative 10. And 0 plus x is just the same as yeah. x. <laughs> So x is negative 10. Dang it, I got x equals 10. It pretty much means nothing. Never mind. How, did, how would someone else solve it from the beginning? How would we go from the beginning? Stacy? So, Right to the negative 10. Dalton? Is that? No. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, this is what we would call a one step equation with addition or subtraction. There's a number that's added to or subtracted from x. We want to add or subtract to that number depending on if it's positive or negative to get it to zero so that we're adding zero to x. Zero added to x if x is, is well x plus zero is the same as x. That's the goal there. by 3, we should divide this by 3 then, too, right? Divide both sides by 3. Okay? So 21 divided by 3 is 7, and what's 3x divided by 3? 0. 1 equals 7. 1x. 1x equals 7. Please stop. Please. X equals 7. Can we verify that's correct? <coughs> How can we verify that's correct? You can plug it in. You can plug 7 in. Correct? 3 times 7 equals 21. Try this. Uh, negative 5x equals 30. I want you to do something to both sides. I know that that, like, this is not a very complicated equation. You could just say to yourself, x must be this number, all right? But that is not a good long-term strategy for solving for x. 